What's up, everybody? It's Lexi D here. Welcome back to Something to Consider. I think I like that title. I've kind of been struggling with, you know, a name for this podcast, but I really like the idea of Something to Consider because that is my natural predisposition when I'm going through a thought process, uh, especially in my workplace. So my on my work in my workplace on my day to day, what I do is primarily that of being a coach to my team. And when you're coaching, you have to find a balance between teaching and enabling your team to do kind of do what you want them to do, but also for them to take on certain aspects as their own. And it can be very challenging. And with that, some tactics and techniques I've learned to do is to offer things for them to try. Not forcing anything, but offering things for them to try. Exploring a problem with them, prompting them with questions, and then at the very end, offering them something to try. Something that I have learned is that when we feel like something is our idea, we take it on and embrace it a lot more. I've actually been walking through this idea a lot lately, and I kind of want to rewatch Inception because I can't remember when it came out, but I suspect that's one of the reasons why Inception it's not inspection inception did I say inspection oh my gosh I I won't know until I listen back to this inception with Leonardo DiCaprio I think he was in it listen to me I might be quoting quoting this all wrong but what I remember about the plot was that it was about implanting an idea into someone else's mind and I believe it was with the goal of them adapting that idea and then doing what they wanted them to do with that idea. It's kind of like, I think of it as a form of manipulation. Now in the movie, from what I recall, they actually went into this person's mind. That's obviously the movie aspect of that. We can't do that in real life. And I'm not proposing that we do that. But I think even if we just use our own experience, if we have a problem and someone dumps all these solutions on us, are we more likely to adapt their solutions or the things that we feel like we've come to or we've partnered with someone to come to those solutions that we could try out right like I would like to think I think even just for myself I'm usually more keen to trying out things if I feel like I was a part of making that decision doesn't mean I'm completely closed off to those other things but I think that's just kind of perhaps a part of human nature I don't know I'm not a psychologist so what I wanted to do in this episode is give you all an update on how I've been feeling lately I said I would do that in my last episode and thankfully long story short I'm feeling better so in my previous episode I shared with you all that I was feeling blah. I was feeling kind of lethargic and just in a slump, in a rut. A lot of names for it, including languishing. And so I have been feeling better, perhaps as a result of a few things that I've tried. So I mentioned in that episode that I wanted to do three things. Prayer, my gratitude journal, And I'm going to cheat here and look at my notes and see what the third thing was. Oh, a social media fast. So let's, let's go through each one. Prayer. I'm not going to lie. I still haven't been the best at it. (laughs) I've been doing kind of like bite sizes of prayer, but I have not, you know, done the full out thing that I know I can do. So that, that I can still improve upon. My gratitude journal. I did do that. And I felt those good feelings that I wanted to feel. And then with the social media piece, I did stay off TikTok. So I definitely felt better about that and started to feel more in control. When it was bad, I was falling in that 
TikTok pit, which is, it is a black hole. And it was very hard to pull myself out. So to just avoid the black hole entirely felt great. Now, something else I did that I don't think I mentioned in that episode or even planned for was I started walking outdoors and it was and has been a really nice experience for me. It's felt meditative. It's felt calming. I work out five days a week, so that's that's not an issue. But just in conversations with my brother, who is a trainer, it has become apparent to me that I'm just not active enough. You know, I work from home, so I'm just naturally more sedentary. And, you know, I have some goals for my life that being active would enable me to potentially reach those goals faster. And so that has also, I, I want to say maybe that has been the dominant thing that has helped transform my mood. It's just those walks. I may listen to a podcast. Usually I will just be listening to music and envisioning myself doing choreography or <laughs> walking down a runway. Does anyone else do that? Like, <laughs> does anyone else hear music, like listen to music and then start doing choreography in your head. Like in my head, I'm a great dancer and I've done, I've gone to some dance classes and I've been recorded and recorded myself. And I know that that's not necessarily my gift, (laughs) but, but in my head, I am talented. I am absolutely talented. So as I was reflecting through how I was feeling with a friend of mine, something came up around productivity. And, you know, I hear a lot about, what is it, toxic, not perfectionism, toxic positivity. What I haven't really come across, and maybe it just hasn't been as explicit, is toxic productivity. This idea that, yes, we want to be productive, but what happens when that becomes the driving force in our lives? What happens when we are in a slump and we don't feel productive and then that stops us from being productive? What is even this idea of productivity? And further, How much does that even matter for our lives? Because when I think of being productive, I don't necessarily think of the things that give me meaning. And what I mean by that is when I think of being productive, I think of doing the laundry. I was going to say taking out the dishes. (laughs) I mean, you can do that if you use a dishwasher. Taking out the trash and doing the dishes, those things. I have a task list every day. I can be a quite I I can be quite a type A kind of person. I love my lists. I have a whole bunch of lists in my phone. And it feels great to check off things from my list. But what I've noticed is that sometimes that list becomes a driver for the day. So much so that I've had to learn to limit my list to three things in a day. If it goes beyond that, what I have found is that I feel like I'm chasing after that list. So, (laughs) and it's kind of like this, it's this crazy, it's this overwhelming feeling of constantly checking my list as if that's going to make things go by any faster just by looking at the list. But then also when I'm in the moment of doing the thing, doing something on one list or not on one list, doing one task on the list, my mind will be on the next task. So it's like, I'm not even present in that moment of what I'm doing. I'm just trying to get through the list. And then parallel to that, my life is happening. Things are happening around me. And so sometimes I get so caught up in that list that I miss things that are com- that are happening around me. 
And so I've had to learn to keep things to a list of three and to also allow flexibility to sometimes not have a list. And when I first started kind of implementing this idea, I had a concern that I would for some reason be not be productive if I didn't have enough on my list, if I didn't have enough driving me. I'm the kind of person who, if you encounter me, you're going to encounter someone who's disciplined, who's motivated, who's who's on top of things. Now, I'm not perfect by any means. In fact, I'm a recovering perfectionist. But lazy? That is that is not me. That's never been me. That is not in my vocabulary. It is not in my I, I it is in my vocabulary. It's not in my identity. <laughs> it's not in my identity to be <clears throat> to be lazy. And so when I was going through that feeling last week of just kind of existing and also dealing with in the background this feeling of like I'm not being productive but also like I'm not aiming for it. Like there's nothing that I'm targeting. There's nothing that I'm aiming for. What I found was that even though I, I tried to add things to my list to help me to feel productive, that was not necessarily making me feel better because it wasn't that I was necessarily even looking to be productive. I was looking for meaning in somehow, some way, I twisted up at one point productivity with meaning. And I can see how that happens because even in, you know, all of our jobs, what are we measured on? Productivity. How productive were you? There's arguments against working from home that it makes you less productive. And some people say working in the office makes you less productive, right? Everything is centered around productivity. So now when I step into my personal life, and and I am someone who does work from home for the time being, stepping into my personal life and trying to shut off that mindset of productivity and moving into meaning, it can be hard. I'm grateful that I have an office so I can at least have some type of compartmentalization. But outside of that, like still walking a few feet, I'm still in the context this mixed context of home and work and things become blurred. And so this idea of being productive, I would say when I look back on that week, I still was productive. I was showing up to work. I was going to the gym. I was, you know, doing my dishes. I was doing the things I'm supposed to be doing. But I was struggling with if I'm doing the things that I'm supposed to be doing, why do I feel this way? And that's because I was really looking for meaning, for presence. Productivity, I feel like, pushes us towards the future. We're always looking towards what is the thing that we need to do next? Where do we need to go next? And I do not get the sense of being present. But when we do things that are meaningful to us, it's usually because we're present. So this podcast is an example of that. When I first thought of doing this podcast, it came birthed, it came birthed, it birthed out of, it was birthed out of, that is a hard word for me to to say. Um, It came out of, a few different things, but I was having a conversation with a friend of mine and I was sharing with him that one of my goals for this year is to live out my and express my God-given talents. And one of those things is speaking and presenting. For as long as I can remember, speaking and presenting has been something that has come quite natural to me. I used to actually want to be a TV broadcaster and I had an opportunity when I was in eighth grade to do something like that, where we got to do like our, our school news and everything. And I loved being in front of the camera. I remember my parents sending me video clips maybe a year ago now. And (laughs) 
I just, I, I looked back and I was like, I, she's a star. She's a star. This is what she's supposed to be doing, you know, in reference to myself. So I've always loved speaking, always loved presenting, you know, and, and I've also received compliments on it whenever I have done workshops and stuff. I've received compliments on my voice. And so I remember when I was sharing this with him and going through the idea of a potential podcast what came to mind immediately, like as soon as I was getting excited about this, I was going to be shut down. Because what came to mind for me were things like metrics, things surrounding productivity. Is anyone going to listen to this? How well is this going to do? I think I may have even thought, can I monetize this? Like I... I hadn't even started it. And here I was trying to make basically a business model out of this. And I'm like, hold up, hold up, hold up. Okay, hold up. I don't know the rest of that, that verse from Nicki Minaj. Anyways, I was like, wait a minute. And he paused with me and he's like, well, why don't you just do this just to do it? Like, why, why not do the podcast? Because you enjoy the process. Like, who cares what the outcome is? Why not do this just to do it? And that immediately clicked for me. And I was like, you know what? He's right. Why can't I do this just to do this? Why does this have to be about productivity or numbers or metrics? Why can't this be about this is what I do just to do it? Because one of the things I also shared with him was that I felt like I had a lot of time on my hands and I wanted something to immerse myself into. And so again, this is where the idea of the podcast came from. And so when he asked, when he asked me that question, it really just solidified, this is my play. This is my, my version of playing. When we think of play, there is no end goal. The the goal is to be in the play, whatever playing looks like for you, right? And as someone who has had quite a bit of time on her hands, <laughs> has had quite, my friends will tell you, I'll break out into song. I am not a singer, but I will break out into song. You know, certain words will set me off. I think it was situations last episode. Um <laughs> will arise so anyways because that gets me off track when I do stuff like that sometimes so having the downtime and and being able to do this just because something else that clicked for me was when he asked me that question you know all of us have gifts all of us have talents and the same can be said for people who can sing People who can sing, it doesn't mean that everyone wants to try to make that a career and make a certain number of songs. What if there's people who know that they can sing and it's a gift and they just do it because they want to. They do it like they they get to enjoy their gift. They sing around their house. They sing with their friends or maybe they decide not to sing. You know, like what, what can it look like basically if we just enjoyed our gifts to enjoy them without having to attach them to some other outcome. And, you know, another reason I feel like this idea of being outcome based and productive come where that comes from is just a lot of how our society functions. You know, I watch a lot of YouTube videos and in those commercials in between the breaks and in between videos, I have seen so many commercials around monetize your passion and you know, do this and save time. And it's just like, it's every, it's everywhere. And for it to be to a point where I was excited about doing something for fun and I was not going to do this because of the possibility that it may not result in anything. Like I was going to rob myself of something that I've really been enjoying so far. I don't know where this is going to go. I don't know if anyone is going to listen to this. (laughs) But what I do know is I have been enjoying myself. And this has been one of the things that has pulled me out of that space of feeling blah. Is doing this as a means to just do it versus 
doing this as a means to an end. So with that, some things for you all to consider is if you find yourself caught up in productivity, ask yourself where that comes from. Ask yourself, is productivity taking, is, is, are you placing that with more priority over meaning in your life? Because productivity, from what I can tell, is outcome-based. And meaning is about being in the present. And I'm not saying that we need to toss out productivity. We need to be productive. I need to take out the trash, do the dishes, you know, do the laundry. I have to do those things. But are, are those going to be the things that I'm going to remember when I head towards the end of my life? Probably not. I'm going to remember the things that were meaningful, you know, and something that I have definitely seen myself improve, improve upon is that is prioritizing the meaningful interactions over productivity. And that is to help me ensure that as I am, you know, as the clock is ticking down, as it is for all of us, that I'm living my life on purpose. I'm living my life on purpose and with intention. So with that, I would ask you all to consider how how productivity plays a role in your life. And if you are placing a lot of emphasis on it, if there's an opportunity to place more emphasis on meaning in your life and what that means to you. I want to thank you all for listening and I'll catch you in the next one.